Objective. The primary thing that we say to anybody is let's cooperate and get this thing over with and then we'll settle the differences once the crisis is over. Such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope between the needs of the government versus the wishes of the public. In a lot of cases these clergy would already be known in the neighborhoods in which they're helping to defuse that situation. For the clergy, one of the biggest tools that they will have in helping calm the public down or obey the law is the Bible itself. Specifically, Romans. Romans 13. Because the government is established by the Lord, you know, and, uh, and that's what we believe in the Christian faith. That's what's stated in the scripture. Civil rights advocates believe the amount of public cooperation may depend largely on how long they expect a suspension of their rights might last. Jeff Farrell, KSLA News 12 reporting. Officials with the Department of Homeland Security report that the anti-terrorism efforts are making great headway. Many of the children who have been removed from these dangerous cults are undergoing round-the-clock therapy and have been successfully deprogrammed from the litany of hate they were once taught to believe. Victims are starting to embrace religious and social acceptance and are being reintegrated back into society. Many are finding relief by helping authorities locate and capture those who had once been their oppressors. One factor that has led to such a high success rate is the cooperation of the global religious community. Brothers and sisters, in these days our God wants us to know that there are many paths to heaven. We serve a big God. And he go by many names. God doesn't care if you're a Catholic, you're a Protestant, gay or straight. He doesn't care if you are Christian, you're Muslim. We are the children of God and called to freedom of worship. It is time for us to embrace the spirit of the new age of tolerance and religion and unity. Uncle Jim, I've just been having the best times of refreshing in the Lord's presence. I really feel like he's telling me he can get us through whatever is coming. Yeah, you know, I've been able to witness to more people than I ever had before. It's like people who aren't born again know things aren't good in the world. Yeah, just the other day, I got to witness to a kid that I used to play soccer with. I wanted to go witness to other kids too, but I don't know, I just really felt the Holy Spirit telling me no. You know, I've had the same thing happen. I can feel the Holy Spirit directing me now more than ever before. Please be careful, boys. You know, I really miss Pastor Dave. I can't believe he was executed for the faith. I know, honey, I miss him too. But you know, we're going to see him again soon. The rapture feels like it's any minute. Every day it seems closer. Yeah, I know it's like things are like really scary and stuff, but it's also so exciting too. Exactly. Man, I can't believe I almost lost everything for some stupid party. Thank God there is mercy to bring you to repentance. <laughs> Bill? This is for your own good, Jim. Get down on the floor. Get down. Dave Hodges, you are under arrest. Everyone on the ground! <laughs> Jim, I'm, I'm sorry. I know we were friends for so long. But you guys need help. I want to help get you free from the deception you've been in. What are you talking about? Just don't fight them, all right? This is for your family's own good. Sir, were these folks threatening you in any way? Absolutely. Yeah. They, they said if I didn't follow their beliefs and go to their church and tell others that they were going to hell, then I would be going to hell. That isn't true. <laughs> <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. You don't know, God. It's too late for you, Bill. You become deceived. <laughs> <laughs> Your property has been seized and now belongs to the Department of Homeland Security. You have waived your civil rights by committing these acts of treason. You will now be taken to lockdown until you can be processed for further incarceration. No, God, please! Don't take my family! They're all I have left! Mr. Rivers, if you're saying what I think you're saying, 
I can get you a plea bargain. Oh, do it, Jim. It's the best thing for you and the family. It wasn't until I was free from Pastor Dave that I discovered all the deception I had been in. What are you talking about? Jim, let me talk to him! No! Please, don't hit my wife again! What do you mean? Mr. Rivers, we will let you and your family go free if you're willing to renounce all ties of social and religious intolerance and agree to undergo deprogramming. Of course, you will have to give us the location of the meeting places of the other rebels. Don't do it, Jim. No, Dad. Don't do it, Don't do it. Quiet! Don't do it, Jim. Don't do it, Jim. No. I'll cooperate. What do you need me to sign? What are you doing? Dad, Dad, Jim, don't do that. Do that. Quiet! Yeah. Let's go up to the van where I have some documents prepared for you. You know, no matter what he signs, you'll all be prosecuted too unless you sign as well. Now, who wants to cooperate? Forget it! You would abandon your own father when he's trying to do what's best for you! Get up! Let's go! The war on intolerance persists as religious insurgents continue to be rounded up. It is unfortunate that they are unable to see what an amazing global community of tolerance, peace, and safety has emerged out of our shared tragedy. Many of the rebels are refusing to be rehabilitated and are forcing lawmakers' hands to incarcerate them in alternative prison facilities. Oh, we are so blessed to have each other. I mean, I never thought I'd thank God for life, but anything that keeps those guards out of here is a blessing. We have so much to be thankful for especially for those of our loved ones who have remained strong in the faith. That's true. I know I'm really thankful for my sons who have died in the faith. They're with the Lord now. Well, you know, I overheard the guards talking today about renewed peace talks in the Middle East between the Jews and Palestinians. This could be it. I sure hope so. I mean, God has been so gracious to us, but I'm ready for this to be over. You know, if we only knew in the days of peace, that all those little trials we thought were persecution were really to prepare us for this, we could have embraced them with joy. You know, when I look back, I'm ashamed of every time I complained I was having a bad day. They were just little inconveniences, but they prepared us to endure this now. Whose turn is it to pray? Okay. Father, thank you so much for giving us the precious gift of our Savior and for the love of each other. Thank you for allowing us to embrace this cup of suffering for your name's sake. Lord, we know our time is short, and we thank you so much for giving um, Forgive our enemies, for they don't understand what they have done, and they need your love. Help us to keep our eyes on you and the prize of finishing this race. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sahara, what is it? You guys have something I don't have. You have so much peace. <coughs> Even after all your enemies have done to you, still you praise your God. My God is not like that. My God does not even answer me. Well, Sahara, you can have it. You can have the same peace, the same love, the same relationship that we have. Do you want it? Yes. Well, come on over here. All you have to do is pray for it. Come on, let's pray and ask you in your heart right now. To the one true God, please forgive me for being so foolish and so stubborn. I want to know you like these women do, through your son Jesus, that Melissa keeps talking about. You keep giving me so many chances, and I keep pushing you away. I won't push you away anymore. Forgive my sins and love me too. Amen. Oh, in Jesus' name, amen. <sighs> Praise God. Amen. Welcome to the family. You know, one of the verses that I meditate on every day is Romans 8.18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Doesn't that just give you peace? <coughs> well, it's a rivers. your last chance, Mel. I've given everything up for you. Are you really going to go through with this? I don't have a choice, Jim. How could you turn your back on the Lord like that? We were at the last hour. Couldn't you hold on a little longer? I love my family, and I love you. I think God understands. 
I did this for you. No, Jim, you did it for you. You should have spent more time preparing your heart in God's presence instead of relying on your knowledge. I only pray you repent before it's too late. Don't you love me anymore, Mel? I do. But I love Jesus more. That's it. Let's go. His grace is sufficient. <laughs> We hadn't done anything wrong. I was handcuffed and uh, accompanied the other people into the paddy wagon. Kept taking our pictures and fingerprints. I realized that we weren't getting out right away. Three felonies? I, I just couldn't imagine just for trying to share the gospel. They took out all references to Jesus. Um, they said I could say God, but not Jesus. Libby came out to the car and she was crying and I said, what's the matter? And she said, well, they told me that I can't do that song. I want to sing that song because um, I am a Christian and I love God and I, thought, and I also love singing. And I thought that would be um, a good way to express how I love God and singing in the same way. And in this case, she wanted to sing her song. And you can't say that because it's religious in nature, she cannot sing her song. That's viewpoint discrimination, and it's illegal. And make no mistake, we're going to see this across the country, in all 50 states, if people of faith don't speak up to preserve our religious freedom. Consider this. 75-year-old grandmothers facing 47 years in prison for offering an alternative to the homosexual lifestyle. Seventh graders in public school being forced to assume Islamic names and stage their own jihad. A church being forced to participate in lesbian civil unions. A man brought up on hate crimes charges because he wrote a letter to the editor of his local newspaper. A mother told she can't read a passage from the Bible to her son's kindergarten class, but given a recommendation that she read them a book about witches instead. These examples are not fiction and they aren't happening in some restrictive far-off country. These are real cases and just the tip of the iceberg of what is happening right here in our midst. Across this nation, parents are learning they can't teach their children according to their religious beliefs because it might be considered hate speech.